यस्तन्मयादय संवदन क्रमेण द्राक्चिशक्तिगण भूमि विभाग भागी हर्षोल्लस पर विकार जुषह करोति वंदे तमाम तमहमिंदुकलावत The chief guest, Professor Kuldeep, Professor Sachidan Joshi, Sharma ji, our colleague at IGNCA, and all the distinguished lovers of Achari Abhinav Gupt who are present here, I welcome you all and I pray that all of us get the fullest blessings of Acharya Abhinav Gupt during these three days of deliberations. The Indira Gandhi National Center for Arts decided that during these celebrations, millennium celebrations of Abhinav Gupt, uh, there would be something done to remember him and remember him well. And what could we do better than getting a galaxy of scholars to think, talk, and deliberate on his works. So it was decided that four seminars would be held in four corners of India to celebrate his works and to bring the memory of Abhinav Gupta at the same level as India remembers Adi Shankaracharya, as India remembers Kalidas. Because this great Vibhuti, who has origin in Kashmir and is really belonging to Kashmir and from there expanding to rest of India, is for various reasons not so well known as he should be. So the first thing we decided and we requested the scholars to bring the attention to the fact that he is a genius of Kashmir. Although it is very well known that uh, his ancestors came from a place where not much is happening recently in the intellectual area, that is Uttar Pradesh, <laughs> and that he had disciples from far distant places like Madurai, you know, Madhuraji Yogi, who came all the way from Madurai to learn from him and who has given us a live portrait of his time, Draksha Ramasya Madhye, you know, where the description. So that was one of the things. And that scholars should talk about that how within almost a hundred years of his uh, composing or dictating these great works, within 100 years these works reached several corners of India. And in his own lifetime, he was regarded as the greatest of Acharyas. He was called Kantheshavataraha Praptaha Kashmira Deshaha. That he was Shiva incarnate in Kashmir and the rest of India knew and remembered and acknowledged this in his own lifetime. So that reflects the great intellectual traffic that happened between universities and places of learning. And that reflects the unity of India that has been there and also that how he learned from a large number of gurus. You see, Abhinav Gupta is special in Indian history because there is not a single area of learning on which he has not said something profound and deep and memorable. Many people talk a lot, and in this age of instant bites, we constantly do that. But that somebody could take every, each and every aspect of life, make it meaningful, and say something which is visited upon again and again. This is the great genius 
of Abhinav Gupta, he learned from such a large number of gurus because he believed that a particular Shastra is mastered by only a single or a scholar or a parampara of scholars, specialists. And therefore, he went from one place to an, uh, he learned in the tradition and maybe he traveled, although there is not much evidence. He learned from different disciplines and he was unique in this respect. So this is being reflected in the papers that have been read in Katra in our first seminar in, Himach in Himachal, the second seminar in Bhopal, and the third one now. So Abhinav Gupta also reflects through his life the total personality. Somebody who can combine dharma, artha, kam, moksha, all. Although he did not marry, but then he had so many manasputra, so many disciples who were his family. And therefore, he wrote not only on every aspect of life, he was somebody who was constantly a grihastha, an acharya, and a great inspirer all together at the same time. I think personally that he is one personality who makes a very great difference to what India can be in future. Because there is an absolute balance of what is rasa, of what is darshan, of what is shastra, and what is prayog. Now, we live in an age where we have about almost 50 or maybe even 100 years of a strange belief that Indian Shastras were only meant to prescribe things, that they came out of the brains of some Brahmins who wanted to control society, and that it had very, each and every Shastra had very little to do with the practical aspect of knowledge. Abhinav Gupta disproves all that. You see, he relates Shastra to that particular area of knowledge which is being practiced there and then before his eyes. And he describes, at least in Abhinav Bharati very clearly, each and everything in the field of Natya which is being played. And he states that also. Lakshyanu Saranam. You see, the whole idea of Vyakya is that what is happening in the world, in the Lakshya, in that a particular area, is to be described in the Vyakya. And Shastra, therefore, is something which is born out of the creativity of the artist as much out of the thinking. Now, this whole idea that Shastra is not something of the past, but of the present needs to be inculcated in our new educational system, which has not been done for the last 70 years. And can there be a greater inspirer for us than Abhinav Gupta? I thank you all for paying attention. And as I say again, that we will all have the blessings of Abhinav Gupta.